Hey everyone, Gabriel Nassif aka Yellow Hat, and today I want to talk about a new archetype in Historic, a new archetype that was enabled by Grease Fang Okiba Boss, which is a 4 free legendary creature, Rat Pilot for white, a black, and a one. At the beginning of combat on your turn, return target vehicle card from your graveyard to the battlefield, it gains haste, and you return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of your next end step. And that card combined was kind of a meme card or what's been a meme card until now, the Perhelion 2, which is just a massive, massive vehicle, 5-5, five, five, flying first strike vigilance, and when it attacks, you get two angels attacking and they stay into play and they have vigilance, so they can also block. It crews for four, which, good for us, can be crewed by Grease Fang. And yeah, I saw these lists pop up uh, on Twitter, and I did a, a long stream on, on the second day of the release. I, I played Historic for eight hours, and uh, a good portion of these eight hours were spent playing this deck and another version of that uh, Grease Fang Parhelion deck, uh, Esper Colors. So how does the deck work? Um, pretty straightforward. You're just trying to uh, get Parhelion in the graveyard and then cast Grease Fang. Hopefully they don't have a counter spell or an instant speed removal. How do you put the Parhelion in your graveyard? Well, you have looting that is legal and historic despite being banned in modern. You've got Frilling Discovery, which is a better cathartic reunion when you're white red. And you've got Engineer, which is nice because you don't even have to have the Parhelion in hand. You can just go and get it. The Engineer is also used a tiny bit for value. That was not in the original list I saw, but I decided to add a couple Acor Wellsprings for these games where you don't have much going and you just want to start accumulating card advantage by, you know, sacking Wellspring back and forth with Engineers. The deck also plays an all-star, red all-star season Pyromancer. Just super versatile card, super strong card, and even better when you're trying to get specific cards in the graveyard. You need a discard outlet, so it's it's a strong card on its own. Honestly, it doesn't even need to be... Uh, it doesn't. You don't even need to have crazy synergies for that card to be good, but it's even better when, when you do. Um, another card that was not in every list at first is Sky Sovereign. It's just extra vehicles. Sometimes you don't draw Engineer and you have these discard outlets, but you don't have the actual Parhelion. And Sky Sovereign, not as impactful, but still pretty strong. It's also much easier to cast. Five mana, it's actually a decent rate. It's a card that was played in Standard, just for value for a long time, and that's been played in Historic before. It was kind of a cool card you could play in the Kethys deck, because you got to only, you know, cost reduction of one, so you got to Kirk Kethys into Sky Sovereign. And... I even remember in some in some combo decks, I think Paradox, um, the Engine deck, the Five Man Artifact deck. I remember people were just playing that card in their sideboard as a way to kind of fight the hate and just have a different win conditions. And then you've got uh, another new card, Reckoner Bangbuster, kind of decent value, pretty pretty. It's a tome, and then it turns into a creature. So not exactly clear you need it in your deck, but. Not a bad card from a new set either. Uh, rounded out, you've got Portable Hole, some Thoughtseize. Originally, the, the deck had the Hot Shot in it, the 2 one for one that crews, but I felt like that card was a little gimmicky and you didn't especially need it. The mana base is pretty decent. You have a Triome in these colors. You do have to play a lot of dual lands and I'm playing a basic, which might not be needed, but I was playing on the ladder and I kept I got paired twice in a row against that player who was playing Assassin's Trophies and the land destruction spell. I forget the name. It's a red and one. You destroy a land and they get to get a basic and you draw a card, but I had no basic, so it was two mana stone ring that drew them a card it was so good for them. So I decided to add a basic for now. New card two, really, really good, really impactful, mech hanger. That's for colorless or lets you cast pilots and vehicle spells. The The pilot part is really nice because Grease Fang has a black mana and you'll see you don't have a ton of black mana in the deck, only 10 sources of black mana besides the mech, which makes playing thoughts is a little sketchy, but um, that was the card that kind of replaced the uh, hot shot. I'm not sure what these cards should be, um, but yeah, mech hanger, 
Really nice ability. It doesn't come up every game, but it, it's come up a decent amount in the match I played. Target vehicle becomes an artifact creature until end of turn. So this is good in a spot where you're out of creatures. You've got your vehicle sitting there. They kill all your other creatures, and you just get to crew it and attack with it. And then sideboard has more Thoughtseize, Glass Casket, which is nice because it's an artifact. Um, basically some removal for annoying creatures like Scavenging Ooze, maybe Rest in Peace. Etc. Etc. And then your own ley line. Always super nice to play ley line in a deck where you have a lot of ways to get rid of them. The big downside of ley lines is that usually when you draw them past your opening hand, they're really bad. They're basically bricks. And not only can this deck cast the ley line, which can come in handy sometimes, but it can uh, has so many ways to get rid of the extra copies. So yeah. I played this deck. I'm guessing there'll be some videos up on my YouTube channel soon. If you don't want to wait, I'll put the link to the VOD uh, from Twitch. My VODs are free to access. You don't have to be a sub. So I'll put the link if you want to go see how these matches played out uh, a little ahead of time. And next, I wanted to show you the version I actually started with because it sounded like that version would be better to me. Like the blue would be more consistent. But it, it's the same concept. You've got Charter Course and First for Knowledge to draw and discard the, the vehicles. The, the downside is you're a little less explosives. You don't have Engineer, you don't have Reunion, you don't have Looting. But you have a new card from Kamigawa, Anchor to Re Reality, which is kind of a poor man stinker. Four mana, you have second artifact or creature, which is nice. And you search for the library for equipment or vehicle card. Put that card onto the battlefield and shuffle if it has mana value less than sacrifice permanence value. Scry 2 that came up like once, but um, yeah, that that only doesn't come up a lot. So why were they able to print that card? Well, there's not a ton of vehicle and equipment. Basically, equipment there's Caldra complete and modern, and as far as vehicle goes, these are I think the two best, most impactful one, and um. You know, they figured it wouldn't be that broken. I mean, at the end of the day, it is an artifact. It needs creatures to crew it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that card was better than I expected to be. I was I was quite impressed. You also played a new Tezzeret. I wasn't super impressed by that card in this deck, but it's probably fine. You played a new Counterspell, which is arguably worse than Metallic Rebuke, but maybe not in this deck. And um, you have the Hotshot mechanic, Portable Hole 2. Portable Hole is just important and it deals with ooze rest in peace it deals with the annoying permanence or lots of the annoying permanence um this is not a deck i've played as much i started with this list i switched to mardu and the mardu deck felt a little stronger and more explosive but it was still kind of a small sample size maybe hotshot mechanic can be cut from this list as well so um yeah what else do you have in blue you have some dispute some veto and sideboard is a lot of the similar cards you also have the mech hanger so that was, uh, yeah, that, that deck, did, both these decks uh, performed well for me. I'll give you a quick look to some of the other decks I've tried on, on day, day one or day two, I guess. I tried a version of Enchantress that was not based around the lock of Solemnity plus nine lives. It was just creature based, tried to abuse that new card, Weaver of Harmony, which is kind of a, a lord for enchantment creatures. The Jukai Naturalist, that card was pretty strong and it can help you race a bit with the lifelink. Uh, you still play Sanctum Weaver, which is secretly the best card in the in the deck. Obviously, the deck couldn't function without Thithis or Enchanter's Presence, but Weaver is is kind of the... I'm not even going to say... I don't know if you can even say Hidden Gem, because it's not that hidden, but yeah. And then I was playing the new Cantrip uh, card, Spirited Companion. Some some cheap creatures to round out the curve, you know, have, have some cheap plays, even if you don't have the naturalist out. And then uh, a little late game stuff. Catilda, which is pretty cool, helps you raise. Evasion, uh, one extra kind of enchantress card, and Hallowed Fountain. This deck was good, but I think at the end of the day, playing the lock is probably better. There's a problem with enchantress right now. People are ready. Uh, I got people who cast Planner or Cleansing against me out of their creature deck, so it's really tough because we both get on the board and then they just cast Cleansing and it's a one-sided Wrath of God. Farewell is a new card that should see play in the meta. So 
Enchantress is good enough to win when people are really not ready and when people don't have great reasons to play these cards in their sideboard, but as soon as they do, your life becomes uh, really, really tough. Sideboard had Baffling in. That card's pretty key because there's uh, decks like Auras, Arcanist. There's some really annoying creatures you need to kill. You can't just kind of block or try and fight in combat. Uh, Arasta was for the Phoenix matchups. I was trying out the new the new planeswalkers. I had a, I had a plan against decks like decks who are gonna have planar cleansing or rampage to clan plus meat hook massacre. My plan was to try to uh, take over was a combination of planeswalker. This way, when they sweep my enchantments, I still have some permanents left in play. Um, then ceratops for some blue decks, but didn't put too too much thought in the in the sideboard. So that deck was fun and cool, and I won a decent bit, but at the end of the day, I would not recommend. Then there was Blue White Affinity, which was decent. It got an upgrade. I think Moonsnare Prototype is really good in that deck. I was a bit disappointed by the other new cards, namely the Reality Chip, the Mind Link Mech, and Tesseract, as well as the Lion Sash. All these cards were a little clunky. They didn't strike me as super good, not in this deck anyways, but I think Moonsnare Moon Prototype is uh, is definitely the real deal. Not a huge, huge surprise. What else did I have time to play since the new set came out? Control, I didn't play a ton because I'm sure I'll get around to playing some Control at some point, but one thing that seems clear is that I think March of Otherworldly Light is going to be good and important, flexible, instant speed, you overpay for it compared to what you're going to kill a lot of the time, but I think the flexibility is worth it. Any other new cards? Farewell. I didn't really have time to really play that much with that card or draw it a ton. Uh, I put a second one in my sideboard. But uh, yeah, not a ton of new cards for this deck, but I think I think March might be a potential like game changer or uh, help, help the control decks stay on par. And... One last deck. I just played a few matches with that deck. It's the list I got from one of my viewers. I was not super impressed. It felt very inconsistent and uh, relied a lot on your Overseer living and your permanence living, which is not really going to happen, but trying to use Prototype again. And yeah, it's Affinity Aggro. You play these seven drops and you're trying to Neoform your seven drop into Crater Hoof. You can also use Neoform to just, uh, you know, sack one of your one mana creatures to get an Overseer that can uh, help you occasionally. But yeah, fun deck. Uh, same deck exists in Modern. And yeah, I was not super impressed, but I only played a few matches with it. Anyways, that's, uh, that's it for me for kind of like day one, day two of the new historic format with Kamigawa. Let, let me know what you think about these decks, maybe decks you've tried, you 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 know, something that caught your eye. Uh, as I said, I'll put the, the link to, to my first uh, real uh, Kamigawa Historic stream in the description, or I'm sure some video are going to pop up in the next few days uh, of, of these matches I played. But um, yeah, hope hope you enjoyed it. Hope you, you know, you learned something or... It was uh, interesting. Uh, let me know what you think. And as always, I hope you have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you next time. Take care.